Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Valiant Organics Limited Q3 and 9M FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anit Sonpal from Valorum Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all. Uh, my name is Anand Sonpal from Valorum Advisors. We represent the Investor Relations of Valiant Organics Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings conference call for the third quarter of financial year 2022. Before we begin, uh, as mandatory, uh, I would like to mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings con call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject, subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings conference call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Let me now introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. Firstly, we have with us Mr. Arvind Cheda, Managing Director, Mr. Mahit Cheda, Executive Director and Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Mihir Shah, uh, Senior Finance Manager. Now, without any further delay, I request Mr. Arvind Cheda to give his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Anurji, and good morning to everyone. It is a pleasure to welcome you all to our earning conference call for the third quarter and nine months ended for the financial year 2022. Let me thank all the participants joining us today, and I hope everyone is keeping safe and well. Given that this is our first ever earning con call in the interest of some participants who are new to the company, let me start by giving a brief overview of the company after which Mr. Mahesh Chara will brief you on the financials and operation highlights of the quarter under review. Valiant Organics Limited is a specialty chemicals manufacturer in India with a legacy of more than three decades. The company is a part of RT Group which have other prominent companies like RT Industries and RT Drugs. We have an outstanding board comprising of highly qualified individuals along with an experienced management team. Our group chairman, Sri Chandrakan V. Gogri, is a stalwart in the Indian chemical industry and founder of much sought after RT group of companies. Our promoters have contributed combined experience of more than 100 years in industry. Valent Organics is into a manufacturing and making of specialty chemicals which finds downstream applications across various sectors such as agrochemicals, pharmaceuticals, dyes, pigments industries, and veterinary drugs manufacturing. The company works across various chemical processes like chlorination, hydrogenation, ammonolysis, methoxylation, amongst others. Some of the key chemicals manufactured by the company include orthoanisidine, paraanisidine, paraaminophenol, orthoaminophenol, orthonitroanisol, paranitroanisol, parachlorophenol, orthochlorophenol, 2,4-dichlorophenol, etc. We have six integrated manufacturing facilities across Gujarat and Maharashtra. We have strong multi-year relationships with our clients in both domestic and international markets thanks to high quality goods, innovative production capabilities and invention driven value added products. In addition to pan-India presence, the company also exports to countries in Asia, Europe and USA. With that, I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Mahesh Chara to brief you on the financials and operation highlights for the quarter and nine months under review. Thank you. Over to Mahesh. Thank you and good morning everyone. And I welcome to this earning call. I hope you have, have had a chance to study our financials and earnings presentation 
which we have uploaded on our website and exchanges. Let me start by briefing you on the financial performance of the company on a consolidated basis for the third quarter of financial year 2022. The revenues from the operations grew by about 5.6% on a Q on Q basis and around 39.6% on YOY basis to around rupees 288 crores. The EBITDA was reported at rupees 50.2 crores, which grew up around 6.1% on Q on Q and degrew by 2.9% on YOY basis. Our EBITDA margin for the quarter was 17.41%. The net profit reported was around 32.2 crores, which grew by 7.3% on Q on Q and decreased by 6.7% Y on Y. Our PAT margins for the quarter was 11.17%. For the nine months ended, the revenue from operations stood at around 805.6 crores, which grew by around 54.7% Y on Y with EBITDA growing by around 0.6%, YOY to rupees 147.8 crores. We managed to achieve an EBITDA margin of 18.35%. The net profit stood at rupees 90.8 crores, degrowing by 5.8 on YOY and PAT margins for 9 months financial year 22 stood at 11.27%. The sales growth on a year-on-year -year basis was driven by healthy demand environment and contribution from new product additions like PAP and para -anicity, which have started contributing to the top line in this year. The PAP plant is still under ramp-up stage and will gradually increase contribution over the next few quarters. In the month of December 21, the Ahmedabad plant underwent a maintenance shutdown which accounted for a drop in volumes in the auto chemistry segment. The EBITDA margins were flattish on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter comparison but show a decline on a year-on-year -year basis primarily driven by rising input costs and freight prices. On the CAPEX front, we are at the final stage of our new project that is OAP and Pharma Intermediate, which we, we, we aim to commercialize in quarter one of 23. With this, we can now open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. <coughs> Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Jain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir, and thanks for taking my question. First, first on the uh, PAP side, PAP side, uh, we have commissioned this uh, in the Q4. Now we are in a Q3. It's been three quarters since we have commissioned. Uh, what is the utilization rate in the PAP we are looking at? And we had some technical issue, I understand, on the PAP side. Uh, uh, on, on what is the situation there? Have we completely resolved it, or we are in the process to resolve it? And when should we expect this uh, utilization to uh, go up significantly? Now that we have a 12,000 metric ton of capacity and India import close to 25,000 metric ton annually, we have a very big uh, addressable market in India for a pass. And from the competition perspective, who in the domestic are putting? more PAP and what is the pricing scenario in PAP? Uh, these are the few initial questions. Uh, hi, thank you for the question. Uh, just to um, uh, start off with uh, your first question on the utilization. Um, so there are two ways uh, where we can consider this. One is um, with uh, the batch and a continuous process. So if I take batch into the uh, consideration, 
then we are at about uh, 25 to 30% utilization. However, um, we still have to make our uh, amendments or process enhancements to make from batch to continuous. Uh, in that case, uh, we will uh, take some time for the ramping up part. So uh, it's very difficult to say at what utilization stage it is at because we are still uh, in the process. Uh, having said that, uh, the issue is um, uh, almost resolved. We have uh, ramped up, if you see um, our numbers as well, uh, starting uh, April to now, we moved from 10 to 20 tons per month to almost about 200 to 50 tons per month uh, currently. So that, that is the ramp up that we've achieved in the last nine months. Uh, this quarter uh, will probably be around the same, but starting uh, next year, we'll see some uh, uh, you know, addition and uh, a good ramp up coming out of PAP. Uh, we'll also initiate simultaneously uh, movement from batch to uh, a continuous process. So that will take another round of trial and error. Uh, so depending on what the outcome happens for that, uh, it will move from say 500, 600 tons to about 1000 is uh, in the form of continuous. So if the continuous trial runs uh, are successful, then we will uh, we, we'll be able to scale up to about 1000 uh, tons uh, uh, in the future. In, in about uh, 12, 12, 15 to 20 months. And uh, coming to, so that's the ramp up. Uh, as far as pricing is concerned, um, uh, I'll let uh, Mahek uh, speak on the pricing bill. So the pricing initially were on a very higher trend as we could because of COVID reasons. But now everything has been sub uh, stabilizing even for the RM prices and even the paracetamol prices have seen a quite a bit drop. So the, when it comes to the RM, uh, the, uh, the PAP prices have also seen a good enough drop in that front. No, what is the current prices because the export data show that the prices per kg went up to 585 rupees per kg. Uh, where is it today as we speak? Uh, as we speak, we uh, we will be in the uh, 625 to 650 range. Um, if you uh, take what the market uh, dynamics are at present. Yeah, can you can you speak on the competition and the PLI uh, uh, also uh, a, a little bit? Uh, how do you see that as an opportunity? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? Uh, uh, speak about what? First on the competition, uh, who are the major uh, PAP producer in India? And are they on a batch manufacturing? Are they on a continuous manufacturing? That's number one. Number two, yeah. I think I, there is a lot of talk on the PLI schemes. Uh, where are we in terms of availing that benefit for the PAP? Yeah. So uh, let me start off. Uh, so a couple of companies uh, came up with uh, the pro the you know capex for PAP production. Uh, some of them include uh, Sadna, Migmani, uh, Banoli. Uh, so these are and uh, so these are a few companies that uh, have um, initiated uh, as far as the capex is concerned. Um, there are no other major players apart from these. Uh, as far as our knowledge says, uh, there are no other players who are re uh, really giving um, uh, PAP in the market. There is uh, one company, but they utilize it uh, captively. Uh, but other than uh, that, we do not know. Um, of any major player currently in the market who is producing PAP domestically and providing. Um, there is the, we, we are expecting, um, uh, you know, even for the PLI scheme, we, uh, we had applied and the others also had applied, but we didn't pass, uh, pass through uh, because of the uh, size of the um, plant that we were putting as compared to others. Having said that, I think uh, we are in the f front runner as far as um, uh, development of PAP is concerned and uh, you know, so, so currently uh, even with the technical issues, we are still there in the market, uh, marketplace and our product is available, which uh, as such uh, no other competitors are there um, alongside. Got it, got it. Uh, sorry to stick on that, but what was this technical issue, if you can elaborate, was it the, I, I understand that color is an important thing in this, you, you need a whitish kind of an output on the PAP side. Uh, where are we on the technical side and do you think uh, the continuous, once we shift to the continuous manufacturing, we will have an advantage versus the uh, 
uh, other domestic player in terms of uh, manufacturing efficiency? Yes, definitely. So, uh, speaking about the color issue, we have uh, rectified that. Uh, we were earlier getting a pinkish color, now we get the white color that uh, is expected. Uh, uh, and we we are almost there now. With the ramping up, we uh, we are uh, seeing that we are getting a stabilized product also. Uh, so the color issue is um, is resolved. Uh, but the another uh, is um, getting the wet to dry. So that's where uh, 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 another uh, technical aspect comes in. So we have uh, resolved uh, that also. So earlier uh, our product was wet. Now we provide dry as well with the color issue resolved. So um, as far as batch is concerned, uh, yes, the problem is resolved. Uh, when we move to when we move to uh, uh, the loop or the continuous part, that's where we have to do the trial run again, and we have to see if the stability uh, of the product color uh, remains. Along with that, we have also, you know, provided our samples to our customers. They also need to do their uh, quality checks, and all of this process takes a bit time. So that stability uh, of the product and whatever feedback we get from the customers, uh, we will, um, you know, move from batch to loop reaction uh, in say a couple next. Uh, three, four, or five months. Uh, you know, we'll get the stability data back. From the from all the customers' feedback, and once we move uh, to loop, yes, our production ramp up will be quick, and definitely it will be in a, a, a competitive edge, uh, or, you know, over the other players. But even with the batch reaction, we still have the competitive edge because there are no other major players in the market. Got it. Got it. Uh, just just. Uh, uh, Sticking to the topic, uh, any thought process why we started with the batch and not directly went into continuous flow manufacturing? Uh, so that uh, so we did our tri trial runs. Uh, we were uh, the the issue that we uh, uh, got the technical issue, the color issue that we were getting, and the, to make from wet to dry was becoming a bit of a, uh, a challenge in terms of loop. So we immediately moved to batch and. Um, now simultaneously work is happening on experiments are happening on the getting it to the loop part. So that's why uh, there was an instability of the uh, product in the loop which we are trying to resolve. And will it be equally difficult for the Sorry to interrupt Mr. Jain. Uh, sir, may we request that you return to the question queue. There are participants waiting for the turn. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, thanks sir, for answering all the questions and I will come back to the queue. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. If time permits, you can come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Shristi Jain from Monarch Networth Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. So I have one question on pharma intermediates. So we are expecting that to commercialize in Q1. So you know, we are putting up a small capacity. What kind of asset turns are we anticipating? And going ahead, do, do we see any for, further capex into the segment? Um, hi, Shruti. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so this uh, particular uh, pharma intermediate plant is like a pilot plant. Uh, we are trying this arrangement, um, whether it uh, you know feasible uh, going in future. So yes, uh, it is a small plant currently, but if all go well and our returns are good on this uh, uh, project, then definitely there are opportunities to uh, you know grow beyond. Um, li like uh, you know. Uh, 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 we do have extra, we do have land parcel uh, almost about 100 um, square meters in Saika. So, so there are uh, ways where we can uh, you know expand. Uh, but we are still contemplating whether to expand into pharma intermediates or any other product line. We'll wait and watch uh, how these products turn out, uh, how these projects turn out to be. So, what kind of revenues are we expecting from this uh, the 20 metric ton plan that we put up? Uh, we are um, on this. We are around 45 to uh, 50 crore uh, uh, turnover is what we are expecting initially. 
there are some multi-purpose plants with multiple products. So depending on what uh, uh, what campaigns we get or what product we get, the margin uh, of each uh, product will vary. So I cannot exactly pinpoint as to what would be the turnover, but it would be somewhere around the 50, 45 to 50 range. Uh, understood, sir. Thanks. Sir, and the realization for ammonolysis has increased significantly. Do we think that's sustainable? Uh, likewise, chlorophenol volume growth has also been significant. You know, what were the key drivers and have we gained market share in chlorophenols? So, uh, in terms of chlorophenols, uh, uh, we had um, capacity, installed capacity which we could get into. So if you see my FY21 numbers, we were at around 12, 13 tons per annum uh, uh, production. But we have the capacity of 18,000 uh, tons. So we kind of definitely got into um, uh, you know utilization of that uh, part also. Having said that, this is very market driven. It is entirely based on uh, market demand supply. So there are certain months where we get uh, good demand from uh, our uh, clients. At that point, we've gone into a 15, 16,000 uh, uh, tons per annum also. A uh, month, sorry, for 15, 1,600 tons a month. Um, but uh, other than that, there's no. Um, um, there's, uh, so this is a volume growth uh, as far as uh, chlorophenols are concerned. Um, having said that, there are other uh, uh, trial products uh, in the uh, you know development which uh, we are looking at, um, but but it is but it is in the um, you know development stage. So I would uh, hold on to commenting on that uh, right now. Um, but but once that also comes in, we'll have some new product coming in that. As far as uh, PNA is concerned, we ramped up our volume at WAPI. So that is where um, the uh, Returns are coming from. Uh, so uh, PNA, uh, a monolysis is concerned. That's where uh, it's coming from. So the realization has also significantly increased. Do we do we think that's sustainable? Uh, so price, uh, it, it, the realization is up because the prices are up. Uh, my raw material prices are up, so my product uh, selling prices are up. So that's why it's a. Uh, is the realization that the number is up, but once the uh, prices, input costs also stabilize, the selling prices also stabilize. Uh, thanks, thanks for answering my questions. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Aditya Ketan from Stuart Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and, and just a couple of questions. So first, on uh, on slide 11, it is mentioned that the Ahmedabad plant has done a maintenance shutdown. First, if you can tell what was the maintenance capex here and what products you make in this plant, and second, how much is the volume loss uh, so regarding to this maintenance shutdown? Um, so as far as uh, volume loss is concerned, I don't have that data ready. Um, uh, we can help that data through at a later stage. Um, but the maintenance shutdown is because we are uh, uh, expanding over there. So currently the capacities are at about 140, 150 tons per month. After the expansion, we uh, assume to be somewhere around uh, uh, 200 200 tons a month kind of, kind of capacity. So that's where we are uh, going. As far as CAPEX is concerned, I think it's in the tune. Uh, also, I don't have that number ready, uh, but it's somewhere in the range of uh, uh, 10, 10 to 12 crores. 10 to 12 crores, okay. Yeah. Sir, second question is on the margins front. Like in this quarter, we are still at 17% only. Earlier, we had guided 22% margins for the full fiscal FY22. And in H1, we had did around 18%. So by default, at least 25% should have came in this quarter. But again, we are seeing sir 17% margin. Sir, my question to you is, is, is just a simple thing. Are we really able to pass on the raw material cost? Because what we had witnessed at the phenol prices in this quarter were quite stable. So what was the reason you're not able to pass on in this quarter also? So, um, so I'll answer in uh, uh, two parts. One is uh, yes, uh, we uh, we did uh, believe that uh, you know the prices will stabilize. So when uh, last quarter we were at the viewpoint that uh, the Q3 prices will stabilize and we will achieve a higher uh, margin. However, uh, it 
it continued to fluctuate, um, although less, but it was fluctuating um, in the current quarter also. So that's why um, uh, you know we uh, our margins uh, continue to squeeze, um, although that is not what we had anticipated. Having said that, um, having said that, we uh, once these margins are stabilized, we will be able to pass on. So our, pro, our contracts are mostly quarter on quarter basis. So every uh, three month basis we will pass on, but, one, but what happens is if the prices continue to increase, then whatever we have renewed the contract doesn't really uh, help us in the best way because the prices still went up uh, in that quarter even after the renewal of the contract. So that's where the margin that we continue to squeeze. Um, Q4, uh, we believe prices have stabilized, uh, so we will see uh, some better, but only to an extent which uh, uh, with the contracts that are renewing uh, in the early part of the quarter. The contracts that renewed towards the end of the quarter, in that case, unfortunately, we will have to continue working on the prices that were booked uh, in uh, Q Q3. So that's, that's the margin squeeze uh, problem that is still there. And this is something which is not in our or anyone's hands. It's all market driven. So just the one thing, if you look at the final price trend for the last three months, it is almost flat is or, 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 or it is slightly down by 5-6%. Now suppose if you had made the contract at the higher prices of the finished products. So now with the declining or, or even the consolidating raw material prices, your spread should have increased for this quarter. But that is not witnessed in the numbers. So like... Uh, Correct. So in case of uh, in case of phenols, uh, your, uh, the raw material price, the phenol prices uh, have stabilized, but the freight costs are high, continue to remain high, and it is uh, it's uh, you know it will continue to remain high for next two three months as well. So that that's why uh, you see you don't see that immediate benefit that we are uh, getting in the margins. Uh, so, but we are only in terms of chlorophenol is, is, is what you are talking about. But our other input raw materials also increase, like right? our PNCB, which goes into our PNA, which goes into our uh, PA, which goes into PAP. All of that are impacted by PNCB. Uh, then we have uh, ONC, uh, ONCB as well, which uh, prices were high. So the other raw materials continue to remain, even though phenol had stabilized. So just one last question, sir, on the pharma intermediate, so if you look at the replacement cost of this plant, it, it is around 2,500 per kilo. And if I check the realization, it is around 2,000 rupees a kilo. So just want to know this 2,000 rupees a kilo pharma intermediate realization. So is this a high value intermediate or what? Uh, and if we are selling this to RT, if suppose we, we sell this to, our, uh, to, uh, to third party, I believe we, we can make good margins over here. Also, um, so the whole purpose of setting up this plant was uh, to provide to RT. It was a part of a backward integration for them and a forward integration for us. Uh, so that's where the arrangement is. And uh, apart from that, uh, to, uh, you know, I understand the calculation you did, uh, but it is not. It won't be as uh, uh, straightforward as that because it's a multi-purpose product. So there will be product where the uh, where the realization will be higher than 2000, and there may be some which could be lower. So that will entirely depend on what uh, products we are um, uh, manufacturing on month-on-month -month basis in that plant. Um, also, the uh, the purpose of this plant was um, um, it's an n minus one, n minus two uh, API uh, intermediate to provide to RC. So um, that that's the arrangement, and we will continue doing that. If if it all all works well, uh, yes, we can explore uh, of uh, you know selling to third party, but not at this plant. It may be at a at an expansion or a going forward uh, projection if we at all do it in this particular segment. Uh, just a follow up to this only, sir. If if suppose you sell it to a third party, so can we expect margins post around 25 to 30 percent? Suppose if you sell it to a third party and not to RT. Um, so at this point, uh, I will not be able to uh, uh, you know answer because it's still under development. Uh, I'm not very sure of how. Um, uh, things turn out, but this plant, I can also, I can one thing for sure that this pilot plant is customized for RC. So I'm not sure if uh, other customers also gain that benefit because it's very customized uh, for the product. Thank you. 
participants, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. The next question is in the line of Arshit Joshi from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity, sir, and uh, thanks a lot for hosting the call. Uh, so my first question uh, is with respect to the customer profile that we may have for uh, uh, the PAP product. Uh, I believe uh, we we have uh, some interest in Bharat Chemicals, who is also a manufacturer of paracetamol. Uh, and uh, at the onset, we also had some uh, plans of uh, 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 merging the company with respect to forward, in the interest of forward integration. Uh, so would the customer profile also be aligned uh, 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 to Bharat Chemicals with respect to sales of PAP, uh, since we are uh, an existing manufacturer of paracetamol? Um, so sorry, I am not following. So our, we produce the PAP and give it to Bharat. And Bharat produces paracetamol. So Valiant Organics yeah. do not produce paracetamol. So the customer profile is entirely different. Uh, so uh, basically, that's what I'm trying to understand. Uh, are, do, are we also looking at you know increasing our stake there so that you know we are able to fully integrate ourselves from PAP to paracetamol uh, uh, at the backdrop of uh, the fact that we are currently selling PAP to Bharat Chemicals. Correct. So we are currently selling our uh, majority, almost 90% to Bharat. Uh, and uh, whatever is the balance, we also uh, out sell in the uh, open market. Um, yes, uh, so that is definitely a fault. But if you see, it's already a subsidy company. So it is. Uh, we are as a group company forward integrated already because uh, Valiant Laboratories of Bharat is, uh, is a part of the group companies, right? So we are forward integrated. So we make the PAP, they make the paracetamol. Uh, the relationship is very clear. Okay. Uh, got it. Uh, thanks for the clarification. So uh, just one last question. Uh, I think we had uh, some vague plans with respect to getting into 24D as well. Uh, since we are already manufacturing certain intermediates uh, which go into 24D as a herbicide. Uh, so anything on that? So we earlier had the plans to uh, get into 24D, but with the ban, uh, we immediately changed our plan. So 24D went on hold, and we started to. Um, uh, so it's the same unit of PAP and pharma intermediates. So uh, whatever uh, little bit that we had started uh, working on, we utilized, quickly utilized uh, that um, uh, you know capex towards our uh, other two projects. So now uh, 24D is not, uh, it's on hold. If at all uh, things get clearer, uh, we may consider getting into it, but no um, no current um, or existing work going on that. Uh, right, sir. Uh, sir, one last uh, uh, on the same uh, uh, issue that you're talking about with respect to uh, sales that are happening to certain group companies. Uh, as you mentioned in the previous comment also, we were selling uh, quite a bit of PNA to RP. I believe that uh, it was a decent quantum of our total sales. Uh, I think back uh, back when I spoke to uh, the CFO earlier, uh, it was about uh, 12 to 13 percent of total sales that was uh, being uh, sold to RT industry. Uh, so, uh, is that product uh, still being sold? Uh, how is it ramped up? Uh, and uh, if you can just throw some light on as to how the concentration is in the total mix with respect to the group companies. So let me just uh, clarify, you're talking about what is the RP's concentration in the terms of uh, yeah. overall um, purchase yeah, yeah, and sales, yeah, right? Yeah. That is what you're asking. Yeah. yeah so, um, so so RP, uh, we, there's a, a good uh, give and take relation uh, both ways, and everything happens at arm's length. Uh, RP uh, on an FY21 number would be about uh, 25 to 30% of uh, our sales. And our purchase would be somewhere around 20-30% uh, 20, uh, 20, also uh, in terms of uh, raw materials because we source PNCB, ONCB as our key raw materials from our team. Uh, so, uh, so I, I probably missed the first part of your question if you could repeat. Yeah. Hello? Am I audible? No, no now you are. Yeah, uh, sorry sir, uh, I'll just repeat. Uh, so the 25-30% uh, of the concentration that we have in our sales to RT, uh, in that, mm -hmm. uh, is there only PNA or is there any other product that we are selling to RT? 
So there are conversion products as well. Uh, so uh, we do a lot of uh, so PNA is there and the job board. So these are the two main products that we sell to our team. Got it, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Nosha Chaudhary from Aditya Birla. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. A uh, few clarifications, sir. Firstly, on this uh, uh, PAP project uh, for the for converting it from batch to continuous. Uh, how much capital we will be uh, needing, and will it be over and above the proposed capex of, uh, if I remember it correctly, around 200 to 20 crore rupees? Correct. So, uh, so, addition, so that 220 crores is a part of uh, so uh, moving from batch to continuous also. So about 20-25 crores of that would be for that conversion of uh, batch to continuous. So, so far we would have capitalized only uh, 200 crore rupees and remaining uh, uh, will be used for converting it, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. And uh, can you help me understand the economics of this? Uh, Though you would have talked it about uh, uh, earlier, but uh, uh, if you can, you know, reshare it in terms of expected revenue and margin and uh, timeline for the uh, 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 ramp up of this uh, project. Okay. So, uh, in t in terms of uh, PAP ramp up, we are currently um, at a 20, 20, 20 to 20 percent um, uh, capacity. Uh, say by uh, Early next year, we will ramp it up to around 45-50 uh, percent. And in the meanwhile, uh, we will also try uh, to do our tri trial runs of batch to continuous. So uh, once that comes in, then uh, we can uh, gradually move to 100 percent. Uh, putting a timeline is little um, uh, vague at this point in time because it all depends on the trial runs from for the continuous process. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is in the line of Manish Jain from Money Life Advisor Services. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. So, firstly, from a longer term perspective, what is the growth plan for the company and how do you plan to achieve it? Um, so, for the um, growth plan, uh, we, like I earlier mentioned, we have blank parcel uh, available where we can do a greenfield project. However, uh, no direct um, uh, identification of product has happened yet because we are currently, uh, you know, this year has gone into three uh, projects that were coming up. So we are currently focused on that. The management is also focused on that. Once we stabilize these products, then we will move towards, uh, you know, expanding based on, um, uh, you know, uh, based on the returns we get from these projects. Okay. And there are certain products, uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier in uh, chlorophenols also, there are uh, a, a couple of uh, products under development. So similarly, uh, some of them are in the, under the drum room process, uh, point, but at this point in time it will be difficult to uh, you know, give a very specific answer. Okay. Uh, secondly, you had earlier given a guidance of achieving rupees 1100 crore in standalone revenue. Given the current pricing environment, what revenue target do you expect to achieve by FY23? And also what will be the operating margins? Also, um, we, we are looking at, a um, uh, for the current year, we are looking at uh, 800, 850 plus uh, revenues. Uh, going forward, um, you know, we, we believe we will be in a 30-40% uh, you know, growth for the next year and maybe a stabilized growth for the year later. Um, given, given the current scenario, um, our margins are squeezed because of the input uh, uh, pricing. If, if they stabilize, then we, all, we uh, definitely believe that we would come back to our earlier uh, range, which was 22 to 25 percent uh, EBITDA margin, which is a stabilized stable state uh, margins for us. But if the prices continue to fluctuate, um, uh, God forbid, uh, COVID continues to remain, in that case, it would be very difficult to say that, uh, you know, what our margins could be. But, but in a normal state, um, a 22 to 25 percent margin, EBITDA margin levels are uh, achievable. 
Thank you. The next question is from, sorry, the next question is from the line of Pranay Jain from Dealview Family Office. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you are. Um, so while most of the questions have been answered, uh, just wanted to get clarity on the big picture. Uh, with, you know, significant capex over the last two years coming to completion and um, some issues which were there earlier having been resolved, other in the works. Uh, leaving aside uh, the unforeseen fluctuity, uh, can we expect 30% uh, kind of uh, compounded growth on uh, top line for the next couple of years? Is that uh, what you're saying? Uh, as business uh, steadies and uh, there is more visibility in the operations. So assuming consolidated uh, revenue ending close to about 1,000 uh, crores this year, can we uh, look forward to maybe 1,700 kind of crores by uh, next two years? Also, I would say um, our conservative uh, and achievable, uh, you know, uh, would be around 20-25 percent uh, compounded growth that can be achievable, and this is on standalone basis. On a control level, I would not be rightly placed to answer because paracetamol is uh, highly fluctuating, and we don't know when that is going to really stabilize. Uh, it is uh, it is very well driven by uh, COVID and Chinese markets. So, um, so on a standalone basis, a 20-25% compounded growth rate is, uh, is achievable. All right. And in terms of uh, data margins, uh, if it's difficult to look two years, uh, about next two quarters, uh, what is the improvement that we can expect based on present conditions and whatever near-term outlook that you have on a blended consolidated basis? I am uh, hoping that uh, the work is definitely behind and they are going to look out from Q4. But uh, over the next two or three quarters, if you could uh, give us some indicative range. So Q4, we believe uh, our prices are still not as what we'd expected. So it could probably be flattish where it is right now uh, in terms of Q4. Uh, but going forward, uh, we believe there will be improvement prices need to stabilize. So once they stabilize and our contracts renew, then uh, our margins will uh, improve from our current 17-18%. Also, our PAP will start contributing, so that will also uh, have an impact. Uh, this year, our PAP and the PA had a limited um, uh, contribution, but uh, next few quarters, uh, we will start to realize from that, do these products as well. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Saurabh from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Saurabh, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. As there is no response from the current participant, we will move on to the next. That is on the line of Subrudo Sarkar from Mount Infra Finance. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi. So, sir, I, I understand that paracetamol price is uh, quite volatile. So uh, on the console basis, sir, if you can guide us at least on the volume terms, like uh, uh, next two, three years, what kind of like growth in volumes we are expecting. So that can also give us some pictures, uh, giving, uh, uh, considering that price is volatile, but at least what is our uh, volume terms uh, target for last uh, next two, three years. This is number one thing. And sir, number two, like, uh, sir, uh, uh, Number two is, uh, again on the margin side, the only thing what I am trying to know is that historically we have clocked much higher margin. So uh, is it, uh, do you feel at some point of time with, uh, with some help or whatever, like is there any possibility we return back to that kind of elevated 20, 27, 28% kind of a margin? Maybe after uh, after two, two uh, one or two years or... Uh, is that possible? This is a first in these two questions. Sure. So to answer your first question, uh, in terms of volume of paracetamol, uh, we would probably expand so we're currently at around 500 uh, uh, tons per month, uh, but we will look towards uh, getting into slowly, gradually towards 750 tons uh, over a period of few quarters. 
So that's in terms of volume of paracetamol. Uh, in terms of margin, um, uh, like you said, so earlier we were, we had a, we were we had lower lesser products. Uh, we were a smaller company, so yes, margins were definitely uh, uh, significantly higher than uh, what they currently are. But as we expand, as new products come in, uh, we uh, uh, we, are, we we believe that 2025 is a achievable stable state, but. Uh, if um, things go all well, then it could probably be uh, improved from there also. And once OAP also comes in, uh, it's, uh, it ha it's a high margin uh, product so that will contribute a little better. So um, I, I wouldn't say that we may, uh, when uh, we come back to that uh, earlier margin, but uh, there is always a potential and opportunity to grow. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Rohit Nagraj from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, on our four segments, that is chlorination, ammonorysis, hydrogenation, and others, uh, how much percentage of uh, products are purely import substitutes? And what is our strategy in terms of developing the new set of products? Thank you. Uh, so, in terms of import substitute, uh, PAP is an import substitute. Uh, then uh, OAP will be an import substitute. PA will be an import substitute. These three are import substitutes. Uh, and uh, ONA, which we uh, captively consume, is also an import import substitute. Um, and apart from that, others are um, uh, across. Uh, they're not. They're not exactly import substitutes. So, out of the entire basket, how much percentage will be import substitute uh, product basket? Um, uh, difficult to answer that question right now. I don't have those numbers ready. But uh, OAP is under development. PAP is ramping up. PA is also ramping up. So, uh, giving a current breakup would not even uh, rightly represent the breakup. Sure, sure. Uh, and the second question is, uh, we have seen over the last, uh, you know, maybe eight ten quarters, uh, from the promoter shareholding, there has been, you know, continuous telling on a quarterly basis. Uh, if you could just uh, give uh, any specific reasons for the same. Thank you. So, uh, promoter, uh, so it's a promoter promoter group. Uh, most of it uh, uh, goes towards donations, uh, and uh, some of them are for personal use. Uh, rest assured, they're not any uh, movement to any strategic uh, concern. So, that, so there's no strategic intent of any promoter to exist. Uh, it is just uh, donation and personal use. Why they sometimes dive into uh, their shares? Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivek Gautam from GS Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, just wanted to ascertain, know that uh, what are the advantages that accrue to us thanks to being part of the RT group and uh, the technical problem being faced in PAP, how they are helping us out. And uh, second question is about the this China plus one, China blue sky policy. Is it benefiting us? in a major way, and what's the opportunity size and CAG are expected due to that? Thank you. Yeah, so to answer your first question, uh, the group company definitely, uh, uh, you know, it helps us uh, uh, in our all our uh, you know, operations. We get the technical knowledge from them. We get the support uh, uh, with respect to that. So even with the PAP uh, issue, we get the uh, know-how, we get the support in order to resolve these issues. So uh, the relationship among the group companies is very, uh, uh, it's very strong um, and resilient. Uh, having said that, um, um, it it's, it's also happens at an arm's length. So uh, it's, it, there's no, uh, in terms of raw material, uh, there is a supply chain uh, stability that we achieve out of, um, uh, you know, uh, getting our uh, raw materials from the group companies. But as far as prices are concerned, we don't get any additional or uh, any that level of uh, benefit being a group company. But stability, uh, how to forecast our operations, that is where uh, uh, we achieve the uh, edge being a part of this group. Yeah, the second question also was there, no? about the opportunity. Uh, sorry, uh, can, can you repeat the second question? Yeah. 
second the no second question was about the expected opportunity size and the growth expected by us in time to come and uh, what impact is china blue sky policy and china okay yeah, the china plus one correct so china plus one definitely has uh, uh, has benefited not just our uh, entire country and entire chemical industry uh, for india so it has definitely benefited uh, in terms of uh, chlorophenol if you see uh, there are only a, a couple of uh, manufacturers uh, us being in india all the rest being in uh, china so that has uh, helped us get some market share because of their environmental issues plus other come other countries uh, china plus one strategy so we have seen uh, that uh, transition and benefit arising from there Uh, apart from that, just general market um, advantage that the entire industry has, we 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 are getting the same benefit. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is in the line of Dhawal Shah from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, hi. Hi. Uh, so, first question is: uh, so, so if there is a new product which you are evaluating to add to your basket, how do you uh, uh, how do you take the call of making it in RP industries versus billion uh, organics? Uh, given RP also has a you know a large bandwidth of chemistry knowledge, uh, so is there some um, uh, size of the molecule, global size, and terms of tonnage? that acts as a benchmark to uh, qualify for rp or uh, radiant or it's some the steps of reaction uh, or the complexity uh, are there about uh, yeah so that's the first question uh, so uh, firstly how these get decided is that the product that we are developing is quite smaller in size uh, for the uh, for a stature of rp uh, Uh, the industry is not something that they would find it interesting to really get into due to the size um, of it. So that automatically uh, uh, is a decision maker there. And second is we always look into a forward backward integration. So if um, if there are certain opportunities that um, you know uh, management is evaluating, we look into whether are we willing to any group companies that can get into it. and depending on the size and which uh, which what would be the best um, uh, the most optimum use uh, of that uh, we kind of make that decision okay so uh, when you say uh, the size of the molecule uh, so is there a particular tonnage that something like a 1000 tons a month or a 2000 tons a month would come to million tons the amount that would go to rp something like that No, so it, 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 it's not really uh, uh, carved in stone that way. It is really a management level decision that they take on case to case basis. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun from Sakavnaya Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, uh, can you throw some light on the EBITDA margins uh, across different chemistries like ammonia, nitrogen, chlorination, and hydrogen? Uh, so, we don't really like to do the uh, level of revenue. Uh, we identify separate chemistries. Otherwise, uh, our EBITDA is at the group level, at the, at the company level, not really chemistry wise. Okay. So, in the group wise uh, capacity utilization. Uh, sorry, I I not following. Uh, could you be a little clearer? Group group level. Can you tell us the group level capacity use utilization? When, when I say group level, I am talking about valent organics, not R P industries. Uh, our capacity uh, is uh, so we are operating at about uh, 80-85 percent capacity utilization, keeping the P A P plant out of the mix. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shashank, a value educator. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for opportunity. Uh, so my question is on the PAP side. So if you see uh, there, are, there is another manufacturer of the PAP from India. So they are doing a capex of about thirty-six thousand metric ton, and uh, they are planning to produce it from the nit- nitro benzene route, uh, which is a one-step reaction, and it's a green process without, uh, I think, much of effluents. By lower processes from the PNCB route, so 
can you please elaborate on uh, on our yes, what are, so, uh, our so yes there are two processes uh, one is from pncb route the other is from nitro benzene uh, if you see uh, globally nitro benzene route uh, has never been successful in a large scale commercial production in laboratory level it it is successful but in a, a commercial level it does not um, uh, give uh, the good output so uh, that is one thing and they haven't really come into the market yet so um, that's all that kind of supports the theory that it is, does not really work at the group uh, at a commercial level uh, for pncb route for us to decide one is uh, pncb uh, is something that we can procure from the group so uh, pncb firstly is a difficult uh, raw material to procure in the country but because rc is in that we have the stability and the uh, you know supply chain uh, uh, like i said supply chain stability to get pncb so that is one uh, reason why we looked into that second is uh, the hydrogenation our plant is located uh, strategically uh, for pap uh, because hydrogenation come for us comes through um, through pipeline whereas other uh, other companies uh, take batch uh, take it on a cylinder or a, a tank level where the costs are higher uh, there is wastage also um, so those are the two main uh, competitive points that we have over others uh, in terms of pap going to pncb routes thank you the next question is in the line of raj kumar from green portfolio please go ahead hello yes thank you sir sir what was the capacity utilization level for pap in q3 uh, sorry uh, come again sir, capacity utilization of for pap plant uh, pap plant for q3 would be uh, at around 25% 25% and sir Sir, what is the meaning of expected ramp up uh, for PP? I mean, what is the meaning here? Context. So the meaning is that uh, we have to go batch by batch. Uh, we were getting a stabilization issue earlier, so we are slowly ramping up from the 20-25 percent to 40-50 percent. Um, so that is one meaning of uh, uh, ramping up. The second is moving from batch to continuous process. So currently, if we are see, uh, if we see maximum capacity in a at a batch level would be say approximately around 500, 550. But when we move to a continuous process, it moves uh, transforms into a thousand uh, uh, capacity, thousand uh, uh, MP capacity. So that's the transition or the ramp up that we are talking about. that earlier that first we will uh, reach the full capacity of at a batch level and then meanwhile uh, the continuous process will also kick in and then we'll ramp up from there to 1000 mp per month okay so what would be the revenue contribution at optimum level for a pap so at optimum or at peak level of 1000 uh, and uh, say so prices are very fluctuating for pap now it all depends on at what price uh, you consider so the turnover uh, can be anywhere uh, between uh, 250 crores to uh, 350 400 crores it, uh, it is it will be market driven at that point in time of the pncb prices and pap prices in the market okay I uh, just last question oh, I mean uh, have Mr Kumar some may be the request that you return to the question queue there are participants waiting for their turn Okay okay thank you ma'am thank you Thank you The next question is in the line of Kushal from Investing Hut please go ahead Hello thanks for taking my question I just wanted to understand uh, our product wise or our chemistry wise uh, capacity utilization for FY21 Uh, so uh, we will have to circle back on that uh, since it's our first. We are not very sure if we want to um, really give that information at this point. Uh, but we we'll take your point. Um, uh, you know, maybe uh, going forward we may uh, provide that detail. But currently, I'm not in a position to provide. But at a plant, at a company level, we are at a 80-85 percent utilization. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Second point was on the continuous reduction in promoter stake. 
I understand that RT group is involved into very uh, into many philanthropy activities. But this certainly puts some pressure on our, uh, uh, you know, uh, share prices and perception regarding uh, the attractiveness of the business. I just wanted to understand uh, when does this continuous selling of shares uh, uh, basically end? I mean, do we have any uh, goal regarding our activities that they, after this point in time there will be a certain definitive reduction in, in, in promoter stake decreasing, or or how do we think about this? Yes, so um, uh, uh, it is very difficult to really control as to who is uh, selling what. Um, but rent assured, like I said earlier, it is not a strategic move or it is not an intention of exiting the company. The promoters are very well invested in the company um, uh, at every level. So there is no such intention of reducing promoter stake for any uh, other reason that I of the, uh, anything other than either donation or uh, you know, just a personal use or something. But I cannot really comment as to when or what, you know, how much it will be at. That, that is something that uh, I cannot predict. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Parthiv Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you so much sir, for taking my question. Uh, so what is the current landed cost of PAP from China uh, in terms of the same uh, quality that we all produce? Uh, and alongside I also want to understand uh, that for a very futuristic view, uh, once assuming that you probably stabilize your uh, continuous process, uh, if at all you were to go for further capacity enhancement, because I understand this is, there is unlimited demand for paracetamol and PAPs of the world. So if you were to go for incremental capacity, will it come at relatively lower cost vis-a-vis the current cost of 230 crores that you spent for the 12,000 metric ton plant? Uh, okay. Just want to understand your break-even point also for this plant uh, with the guidance you've given for FY23. Um, so, um, so the first question is, um, in terms of uh, in terms of China, the prices are not really very different, but we get the uh, competitive edge in terms of the duty. So that's where uh, domestic uh, uh, domestic uh, uh, you know manufacturer benefit uh, and also freight. So duty and freight are the two additional costs that uh, are uh, you know that is the advantage we get. Otherwise, at the pricing level of PAP, uh, China and India would be at par. Um, second point uh, is your uh, uh, is the growth uh, part. As far as this particular part is concerned, um, uh, I have to also confirm, but I don't think uh, there is um, room for further enhancement in this particular plant. We can always set up a new plant uh, elsewhere if we uh, intend to expand the PAP production. Um, having said that, if we expand it elsewhere, the cost uh, kind of the capex uh, remains the same. However, uh, the problems that we faced uh, in order to begin and ramp up, that is where uh, uh, it could be a the shortened period to commercialize would be the benefit we would get if we expand elsewhere. So I, uh, at the same plant, it can it can uh, probably uh, go up to around uh, 1500 from 1000. Um, by some other um, process enhancements, uh, that would significantly be lower. Sir, so I simply appreciate uh, the Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Shah. Sir, so may we request that you return to the question queue? There are participants sure. waiting for their turn. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kushal from Investing Hut. Please go ahead. Kushal, your line uh, is in the top mode. Yeah, hi. Just wanted some more clarity about the uh, margins we are getting currently. Uh, as we all know, two, three years back, uh, it was above 25% and now uh, we are side of in mid-teens. Uh, so just wanted to understand when will these margins come back. I understand we have a quarterly reset, uh, but what is the kind of margins uh, we are expecting on a sustainable basis and uh, any, any expected uh, timeline when we reach those margins? Uh, yes, so I already answered that question once. Uh, we are, uh, we expect our stabilized margins to be at around 20 to 25 percent, but when we will uh, return to that level is difficult to say because it's very uh, market driven. 
uh, it is all because of the input cost price increase. So as long as uh, these costs keep increasing, uh, even with our quarterly um, uh, 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 quarterly renewal, it will still not help because quarter on quarter it will continue to uh, increase. So our margin continue to remain squeezed. But uh, once we see a full qu two quarter or three quarter of stabilized pricing, we will see. Uh, uh, the margins uh, returning back, but it is all market driven. It's not something that I can predict. So just to follow up on that, when when raw material prices increases, we have a quarter lag in terms of increase of our final outputs. Correct. What happens when when the situation turns, what happens when raw material we, prices? We get the benefit of that definitely. So when when the prices come down and our contracts are at a higher price, we continue to reap that benefit until the renewal. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management from Valiant Organics Limited for their closing comments. Thank you all for participating in this Ed Pearling's concourse. I hope you were able to answer your questions satisfactorily and at the same time offer insights into our business. If you have any further questions or would like to know more about the company, please reach out to our Investor Relations Manager at Valorem Advisor. Thank you, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Valiant Organics Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. <laughs>